Iceland. What an amazing place. And it's in the headlines with new eruptions occurring that mesmerize us with their beauty and at the same time cause concern and even fear for the potential loss of life and property. Fear of an uncertain future. Will it continue to grow in size and ferocity? Could new areas begin to erupt? Events like this can give us an opportunity to reflect on how unstable the earth can be and just how much we are at the mercy of Mother Nature. It also gives us the opportunity to wonder about the geologic processes that drive such events and it turns out that there is a fascinating and unusual geology story to discover. Let's start by going back 180 million years in time to the supercontinent Pangaea. This was right when the massive landmass was beginning to tear apart into the many pieces that we live on today. The largest rupture started along here between Africa and North America and this great fissure in the earth continued to grow to the north and south. The propagation of the tear northward took about 55 million years to get to Iceland. The growth southward was a bit faster. It took about 40 million years to make its way down to the southern tip of South America. As the various continents moved away from this great fissure known as the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, it began to create the Great Atlantic Ocean which continues to grow even today. The Atlantic Ocean is widening by just a few centimeters per year, which is about as fast as your fingernails grow. There are many of these fissures in the Earth's surface, shown by the colored lines here. They divide the planet into tectonic plates which move around through geologic time in various ways. This fascinating map is color-coded to the age of the oceanic crust. The red colors along the mid-Atlantic ridge indicate that it is less than about 20 million years old, and of course new crust is being formed all along the ridge relatively recently. Moving away from the ridge, we see the crust getting older and older, the middle green color is about 120 million years old, and working out to the blue colors, it gets to about 180 million years old. The great jagged fracture running down the middle of the Atlantic has a fairly consistent look to it until you approach Iceland. Instead of being in deep waters, it steadily rises up shallower and shallower until it is exposed above sea level right through Iceland. This seems odd. Why is there an island right on top of the fissure? The first explanation is fairly obvious. There's a lot more magma rising up from the depths of the earth, so much in fact that is building an island. Okay, but why? Well, it turns out that Iceland has something in common with Hawaii and Yellowstone National Park. All three sit on top of a hot spot which the tectonic plates move over. But unlike Hawaii and Yellowstone, Iceland sits on top of a plate boundary. This geologic map will help us understand this better. The red lines going from south to north is the mapped rift, and the red dots show the position of the hot spot through time. It was here 40 million years ago and migrated southeastward through time to its present position. Not all hot spots are stationary. The positions we see here are a combination of the plate moving over the hot spot and the movement of the hot spot itself. These processes can be difficult to get your head around. How can it be that there are tectonic plates floating around on the surface of the earth, crashing into each other and forming mountains or diving deep into the earth? I find it helpful for me to scale things down to a size that I can get my head around. And that's why I have this exercise ball. I want to scale the entire planet right down to the size of this ball. And then I have something for you to think about. We know about continental crust and oceanic crust, with the continental crust being thick, thicker than the oceanic crust. How thick do you think the continental crust would be on this scaled model? Do you have a thought in your head? A good guess? Well, I'm going to show you something. Yep, I've got this here, 11 sheets of paper. 
That's how thick the continental crust would be. Now for the oceanic crust. Well, guess again. Well, it's pretty hard to believe, but it's uh, two sheets of paper thick. Yep, two sheets of printing paper thick. Now, these plates moving around and being so prone to break apart and crash into each other and how the heat from within the earth can move this around, well, it kind of helps us understand that. At least it does me. And boy, these plates that we're all living our lives on seem rather fragile at this scale, don't they? All this information taken together makes it unsurprising to have eruptions spreading along the fissures shown in red recently. I hope you found this video interesting. Thank you for watching.